Welcome to the Legacy Education ICD 10 CM Guideline Review Series. I'm Tiffany Roach, the Coding Coach, and I will be walking through the ICD 10 CM guidelines with you. This video will cover the chapter specific guidelines for Chapter 18 Symptoms, Signs, and Abnormal Clinical and Laboratory Findings, not elsewhere classified, which are represented by codes R00 through R99. This presentation is designed to review the ICD-10 CM guidelines that are effective for both fiscal year 2024 and 2025. There were no changes to the guidelines from fiscal year 2024 to 2025. Codes from Chapter 18 include signs, symptoms, and abnormal results of clinical or other investigative procedures and ill-defined conditions that have no diagnosis that is classifiable elsewhere. Codes that represent signs and symptoms should only be coded when there has not been an established or confirmed diagnosis by the provider. Codes for sign and symptoms may be reported in addition to a definitive diagnosis when the sign or symptom is not routinely associated with that diagnosis. An example would be sign or symptoms that are associated with complex syndromes. The only time that a sign or symptom that is routinely associated with a disease process should be coded separately is when you are instructed by the guidelines or your tabular index. ICD-10-CM contains many combination codes that will identify both the definitive diagnosis and a common sign or symptom. When one of these combo codes is used, an additional code for the symptom should not be assigned. When a patient presents for an encounter and has recently fallen, and the reason for that fall is being investigated, code R29.6 should, should be used. If the patient has fallen in the past and is at high risk for future falls, code Z91.81 should be reported. When appropriate, these codes can be assigned together. Code R40.20 should be assigned when the underlying reason or cause for the coma is unknown or if the cause is a traumatic brain injury and the coma scale is not documented within the medical record. You should not report unspecified coma or coma scale scores for a patient that is in a medically induced coma or a sedated patient. The coma scale can be used together with traumatic brain injury codes. However, they cannot be used with code R40.2A for a non-traumatic coma due to an underlying condition. Coma scale codes are used primarily for trauma registries, but they can be collected in any setting where the information is collected. When used, they should be sequenced after the diagnosis code for the coma. In order to accurately report the coma scale, one code from each subcategory R40.21 for the eyes open, R40.22 for best verbal response, and R40.23 for best motor response should be reported. The seventh character will indicate when the scale was recorded and it should match for all three codes. You should always report the initial score that is documented on presentation at the facility. It can be either from EMTs or from the emergency department itself. Code R40.24 for the Glasgow Coma Scale should only be reported when it is documented in the record and not the individual scores. If multiple scores are reported in the first 24 hours after admission, you should only assign the code for the score at the time of admission. Systemic Inflammatory Response Syndrome, also referred to as SIRS, can develop as a result of certain non-infectious disease processes such as trauma, malignant neoplasm, or pancreatitis. When SIRS is documented with a non-infectious condition and there is no subsequent infection documented, the code for the underlying condition should be assigned first, followed by code R65.10 or R65.11, depending on whether acute organ dysfunction is present. If acute organ dysfunction is present, the appropriate code for the organ dysfunction should be reported in addition to code R65.11. If the acute organ dysfunction cannot be determined to be associated with SIRS or due to another condition, you should query the provider. 
Code R99 for ill-defined and unknown causes of mortality should be rarely used, only in the limited circumstance that the patient has been brought to the emergency department or facility and is pronounced dead on arrival. It should not be used solely on death at discharge. The NIH stroke stroke scale codes, subcategory R29.7, can be used in conjunction with acute stroke codes I-60 through I-69 to identify the patient's neurological status and the severity of the stroke. When they are used, they should be sequenced following the acute stroke code. As always, thank you for supporting us and stay tuned for new videos in our ICD-10-CM guideline review. Please make sure to subscribe to our channel so that you can be in the know of our newest videos as they are released.